We spent the whole winter term studying proteins, but never discussed specifically where they come from or how they are made. Proteins are coded for by genes and are made in a multi-step process. Transcription is the making of RNA, specifically messenger RNA or mRNA, from a DNA template. It is like taking something that is written in English and copying it, substituting all the T's with U's. The language, in this case, is nucleic acids. Translation is the manufacturing of a protein from a strand of mRNA. This is like taking something written in English and translating it into another language. In this case, you are going from nucleic acid language to protein language. As you can see from the diagram, the process of transcription followed by translation results in a protein. The majority of this lecture will focus on transcription and translation in eukaryotes, but there are some important differences between these processes in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and I will point out some of these differences along the way. In eukaryotes, this process happens in two different places. Transcription occurs in the nucleus, and the mRNA then gets shipped out into the cytoplasm, where it is translated by ribosomes. Obviously, since prokaryotes have no nucleus, the entire process occurs in the cytoplasm. Here is a very large overview of this complex process as it happens in eukaryotes. In this lesson, we will talk in detail about the various steps of this complex process. For now, notice that the DNA, located in the nucleus, gets transcribed into mRNA. The mRNA is then processed before it leaves the nucleus for the cytoplasm, where it is met by a ribosome in order to be translated. Transcription is a multi-step process. Before we delve into the details here, pause the video and watch the transcription animation. The link is located in a separate document on the portal. There are a few important basics you need to understand before we talk about the first stage of transcription. This diagram shows a stretch of double-stranded DNA containing your favorite gene, or YFG. Notice the anti-parallel nature of the strands. Assuming that the DNA is read left to right, the bottom strand is known as the template strand. As the name implies, this is a strand that is read in the process of transcription as the newly synthesized mRNA gets made in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The top strand is known as the coding strand, as the nucleotide sequence of this strand is identical to that of the mRNA, except that the mRNA contains uracil instead of thymine. The segment of DNA to the left of your favorite gene is known as being upstream, while the segment to the right is downstream. Two important areas on the DNA strand that are upstream of the target gene are known as the promoter and the transcription start site, or TSS for short. Also upstream of the gene of interest is an area known as the 5' UTR, or the 5' untranslated region which is a segment of the DNA that is transcribed but not translated into amino acids later on in the process. Note that although the 5' UTR matches up with the 3' end of the template strand, the 5' is referring to the end of the mRNA that is being synthesized. The first stage of transcription is the binding of RNA polymerase to a promoter site, which, as you can see here, is located upstream from both the transcription start site and the gene of interest. Once the RNA polymerase is bound to the promoter, transcription starts at the transcription start site, also known as the initiation site. The chain of mRNA grows very quickly, as anywhere from 20 to 50 bases are added for each second the transcription occurs. You can see from the top part of this diagram that the mRNA gets twisted up in the DNA double helix that is being produced. 
The bottom part of the diagram shows the enzyme topoisomerase untwisting the growing strand of mRNA, as well as alleviating the tension in the DNA strand. Transcription ends and mRNA synthesis stops when one of two things occurs. Either the sequence of RNA coded for at the termination sequence causes the RNA to hydrogen bond with itself and detach from the DNA, or a protein bound to the terminator pushes the mRNA transcript off of the DNA. When transcription ends, there is a new segment of mRNA in the nucleus of the cell. The next step is for that mRNA strand to be translated into amino acids, which will then fold up to form a functional protein. However, before that can occur, the strand of mRNA needs to be processed. As you can see from this diagram, the strand of DNA contains areas known as introns and exons. The term exons refers to regions that are ultimately expressed, while introns are interspersed between the exons. Therefore, introns are segments of the DNA that do not code for proteins, while exons are segments of the DNA that do code for proteins. You can see that when the mRNA is first made, all of the DNA, introns and exons, is transcribed. However, before the mRNA leaves the nucleus, it is processed and the introns are spliced out, leaving only the exons, which will code for the amino acids making up the protein coded for by the gene of interest. Prokaryotic genes do not contain introns. After the mRNA transcript is made, it will be exported from the nucleus and will be translated into protein by ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Before we discuss some of the intricacies of translation, you should pause the video and watch the animation on translation. During the process of translation, ribosomes, which are made of ribosomal RNA or rRNA, translate three nucleotide segments of the mRNA, known as codons, into amino acids. Translation begins at a start codon, AUG, and it ends at a stop codon, UAA, UAG, or UGA. The other codons are translated into different amino acids as are shown in the diagram. To read this, Notice that the black letters on the top represent all the possible codons. Underneath is the three-letter abbreviation for the name of the amino acid, and beneath that is the one-letter abbreviation for the name of the amino acid. Here is another chart that can help you discern which amino acid is coded for by each codon. For example, the codon CCG codes for proline. Notice that although there are 64 different codons, there are only 20 different amino acids, meaning that each amino acid is typically coded for by more than one codon. Let's take a close-up view of what goes on at a ribosome. First, take a look at one of the transfer RNA or tRNA molecules coming into the ribosome. On one end is an amino acid, and on the other end is an anticodon are an area of three nucleotides that are complementary to the codon. Notice that the ribosome has two subunits, a large one and a small one. In the large ribosomal subunit, notice that there are three important sites, the A site, the P site, and the E site. The picture on the left shows a new tRNA molecule with an attached amino acid entering the A site or the amino acyl site. The anticodon pairs with the codon of the mRNA. In the middle picture, you can see that the P site, or peptidyl site, is where the growing amino acid chain is kept until it is transferred to the tRNA in the A site. And the last picture shows the E site, or the exit site, where the empty tRNA molecule is exiting the ribosome. 
you can see that this cycle continues until a stop codon is reached and translation ends. In bacteria, this process is slightly different. Since there is no nucleus and the mRNA doesn't need to be processed, it can be translated immediately once it has been transcribed. In fact, it is actually translated while it is being transcribed. As you can see from the bottom picture, more than one copy of the mRNA is made and more than one ribosome translates each piece. The orange globs are ribosomes and they translate the mRNA as it is being synthesized by the RNA polymerase. Notice that it is common to have a few ribosomes translating any one piece of mRNA. This is a very efficient way for the cell to crank out lots of proteins in a short time. The top picture shows an electron micrograph of this process. You can see the red bumps that are ribosomes in very close proximity to the DNA as they are actually translating the mRNA transcript as it is produced. Oftentimes, the process of transcription and translation occur seamlessly, creating a protein that is functional. However, mutations can occur which, in some instances, hinder the process. There are two broad categories of mutations, base substitutions and frame shifts. The three types of base substitutions are summarized in the chart here. They are silent mutations, missense mutations, and nonsense mutations. In a silent mutation, one nucleotide changes. However, the codon that results from this mutation codes for the same amino acid as the codon did before the mutation. As a result, there will be a change in genotype, but no change in phenotype, as the mutation doesn't change the protein at all. Therefore, a silent mutation is harmless. A missense mutation occurs when a single nucleotide changes, producing a codon that codes for a different amino acid than the one coded for by the previous codon. Depending on what the change is, this type of mutation could have far-reaching effects but doesn't necessarily have to if the substituted amino acid has characteristics similar to the original or if it is in a non-essential part of the protein. A nonsense mutation occurs when a nucleotide switches so that the new codon is a stop codon rather than a codon which codes for an amino acid. Depending on where this occurs, it could have far-reaching effects as only part of the protein would be produced. Frame shift mutations occur when a nucleotide is added or deleted from a DNA sequence, shifting the entire reading frame. These are very detrimental types of mutations as every codon downstream from the mutation will be different than it should have been.